Hey there, once again, YouTube. So I'm going to bring something to you today that's kind of funny in a way. It's uh, it's not a mistake, really, by USGS, but it's very weird. I thought it was very, very odd. So we're going to go down here to South America. Let's go. Well, let me go down there. Okay, I'll just zoom in like this. So you will notice something down here near Paraguay in Southern America. Let's see, there's a 4.5 at 252.9 kilometers in depth, but that is not what I want to talk about. I want to talk about this magnitude 0, 0.0 at 33 kilometers in depth with the tsunami warning. What? Do you see that? Magnitude 0, 0.0. Ah! Tsunami! That doesn't make any sense. Even if it was at 33 kilometers in depth, it would take a big earthquake to cause a tsunami. So I don't even know how they even had a tsunami alert for a magnitude 0, 0.0. Don't even know how that's even possible. But I just want to take a look at this because it's very odd because USGS, usually when it's not within their network, I mean, they they do have some stations around South America. But really in these areas, for example, like the Middle East or South America, they usually don't report small earthquakes like 1.0, 0 0.5, especially 0, 0.0. So this caught my eye. I thought it was very interesting because they usually do not report earthquakes this small. Apparently, they're reporting a 0, 0.0 at 33 kilometers in depth on May 22nd, 2019 at 232 U or 223 UTC. Excuse me. A little bit of dyslexia there. Look, there's a tsunami warning for magnitude 0, 0.0. Oh, but nobody felt it. So it could cause a tsunami, but nobody felt it? Hmm. That's very odd. I thought this was a mistake. I thought this was a legitimate mistake, but it was reviewed by a seismologist, and I did look at the data myself. And the data is there. However, let's go to origin and click phases. No phase information available. So we cannot find the closest seismic station to this earthquake or whatever it was. And magnitudes, no magnitude information available. I don't know why they're not giving out the information. But do not let that stop you. Go to the Iris G map. Here, let me go back real quick. We're at ds.iris.edu slash gmap, which is one of my favorite tools to use to find seismic stations when USGS does not state the closest station. Now, here we are. Now, notice the epicenter of the magnitude 0, 0.0. Let me go back just real quick. Very, very strange event in Paraguay. Very odd. Right on the border of... What is that? What country is that? Sorry, guys. Uh, what country is that? Argentina. Is that really Argentina? Argentina and Paraguay. Yeah, I guess that's Argentina. Okay, so the border of Argentina and Paraguay right here. Notice right in this location right here, and we can see that would be that location right there. So uh, we notice that there is no local station really at all, except we do see some stations down here in the USPSC data center. I tried going to their data select URL builder and entering the parameters in for all of these stations in the XC network. Nothing. It would not give me any data, and which uh, pretty much surprised me because they say the stations are active and they are streaming data. I entered all the parameters correctly. I even triple checked the parameters. The parameters were correct. It wasn't that. So for some reason, we cannot get the data from that. So I decided to use the next closest station, which is this one right here. CPUP in the GT network. Notice data center Iris DMC. So let's click more information. We see it is 00BHG is the one that I'm going to use. And remember the magnitude 0, 0.0 occurred right down here, right in this area. And they say it was a 0, 0 at 33 kilometers in depth. I'm starting to think it was probably a little bit larger than that. But you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. It's very, very strange. Now, again, the epicenter is right here, the 0, 0. The station we're going to use is all the way down here. Let's see, 50 kilometers from there to there. I'm going to say that's a good... 150 kilometers, maybe 200 kilometers. So let's check out the seismic data to the closest station that I was able to gather data from, which is CPUP in the GT network, and see what the heck is going on. All right, here we have the most recent data from CPUP in the GT network, location code 00, broadband vertical. Since it is a broadband station, I added a 1 hertz high pass filter enabled to the 8th power. Okay, now that we got that, Let's take a look at this. So remember, it said it occurred at, let's go back. Let's see, the 0, 0.0 occurred at 2.23 UTC on May 22nd. So here we have the data from the closest seismic station to this event. Now again, 2.23 UTC. So I added a filter, remember? 
Okay, so let's go to 223. 223. Now remember, since it is about 150 kilometers to 200 kilometers away, we should see the arrival time be after 223. Because whenever they say an earthquake occurred at a certain time, that's the time the earthquake actually occurred. Remember, it takes a while for uh, seismic waves to approach neighboring stations, depending on how far away they are and how deep the event is. So we should see it appear a little bit later on than 223. I'm going to guess maybe like 227. And there we have it. There is something right here. We see this event right here, and it's not a teleseism. You can tell it is looks like a regional event, which is something that's not a teleseism or a local event. It's kind of in the middle. Um, let's go to the waveform, shall we? Let's take a look at this. Look at the low frequencies. Are you seeing this? Let's go forward a little bit. Whoops. Uh-oh. Sorry, guys. Let me zoom in one more time. There we go. Okay. So we see the P wave right there starts. Doesn't look too, too emergent, but look at the low frequencies. On this station, it's a broadband station only going up to about 150 amplitude count at the max. Again, they say it was a 0, 0.0 at 33 kilometers in depth. Very odd that it would, even if for a 0, 0.0 at that deep of a depth, it's still strange that it traveled this far. Very, very, very odd. I have to say, I've never really seen anything like this. So, but still, I don't understand why they would say it would cause a tsunami. I don't know what's going on here. Why is it glitching like that? What is up with that glitch? Why does it keep doing that? Okay, you know what? I'm just going to set, let's go to manual scale. I'm just going to set 150. 150. There we go. Okay, so now that we got that, this is the event. Again, they say it's magnitude 0.0, .0 at 33 kilometers in depth. Let's check out the dominant frequencies of the first burst of this event. And that is not what I wanted to do. My goodness. My goodness. There we go. Log power. Keep walk frequency on. Notice we see some pretty low frequencies, which we should see the frequencies diminishing and getting lower and lower and lower the farther away from the epicenter we are. That's why teleseisms look like low frequency events, but usually carry dominant frequencies much lower than actual local low frequency events, if you know what I'm talking about. This is very strange. It's a very, very odd event. I have no idea what would cause this. In my opinion, it almost looks like it could be some type of volcanic event i i don't know guys i i don't know it's very 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 odd let's see the p wave just for a second remember this is the closest station i could find data for all the other stations are still kind of far away but i couldn't find data for those either again this is about 200 kilometers away so we should see frequencies somewhat in the lower frequency band for example lower uh excuse me regional earthquakes but let's say there's a high frequency regional earthquake with strengths going past 25 hertz. That would, the frequencies would lower maybe down to about 10 hertz or so. But this is a little bit lower than what I would expect for how far away this station is. But that still doesn't explain how nobody felt the event, but they had a tsunami warning. How in the living heck did a tsunami warning even get posted for anything like this? And plus the event lasted quite long too. Again, could this be a low-frequency tremor or a low-frequency earthquake? Maybe. I don't know. You let me know. You be the judge on that. Very odd, guys. Very, very odd. See, it starts to die down right about there. And here's the coda. Going to the beginning of it. Right about here. Very weird, guys. So what do you think? I thought this was a mistake at first until I actually looked at the data and there was a real seismic event. There really was a real seismic event, possibly some type of tremor event, or some deep, weird, maybe a DLP. My goodness, maybe this could be an actual DLP, a deep, long period event. DLPs can travel pretty far because of their depths, so I don't know. A lot of DLPs are seen underneath the Cascade Range, but of course they do occur along, uh, under volcanoes and volcanic areas everywhere, guys. I'm not saying this area is a volcanic area. But the thing is, is at those depths, magma can flow without even erupting on the surface sometimes. So that does happen because DLPs in the Cascade Range have also been identified in other areas, not really near a volcano, but it could just be the horizontal flow of magma. 
But then again, I don't know for sure if this was magma causing this. It could be because of how low the frequencies are. But then again, that could be, that could have to do with how far away the station is. Again, zooming out. This is the magnitude 0.0, .0 at 33 kilometers in depth. Again, right here on the border of Paraguay. The closest seismic station was right in this location down here. Yeah. Okay, so that is very odd, guys. And again, tsunami warning. But nobody felt it. <laughs> Isn't that weird? All right, let's just look at some of the earthquakes lately. There's actually, right here, there was a magnitude 3.2 in the Netherlands. Very interesting. I actually just noticed that right now. In the Netherlands, don't see earthquakes happening there very much. Seven people reported feeling it down to the south of the epicenter. Very, very interesting. In the Netherlands, look at that. Strange location, guys. Very strange location. 3.2, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth on May 22nd at 3.48. So let's check out the seismic data for that just real quick. Here's the Geofon Data Select URL Builder, which is a uh, host a lot of stations within a lot of networks for Europe and other areas around the world. Again, this is not the IRIS or NCEDC or SCEDC data select URL builder. This is SizeComp P3 FDSN WS, which is usually what they use for foreign data centers. And sometimes it's kind of hard to gather data from foreign data centers, guys. But Geofund makes it very easy, just like the IRIS one. The, apparently, according to the rival time, the closest station was WLF in the GE network broadband vertical. Again, on the 22nd. All right, so let's enter those data parameters just real quick. Start time, let's do, what was it, 22nd. End time, 23rd. Network GE, WLF station, location code, dash, dash, BHC, channel code. Everything else is good. Let me pan over just to make sure the data downloaded. Yes, it did. Let's check it out in the seismic program swarm. Here we are back in the Seismic Program Swarm with Station WLF in the GE Network Broadband Vertical. We're going to take a look at the 3.2 in the Netherlands. I don't want to do that. Whoops. It's a broadband station. So, high pass enabled, 1 hertz to the 8th power. Press OK. All right. Now, the earthquake, let's see. The earthquake occurred at 348 UTC. 348 AM suggest. oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Hello. What is this? That's odd. Now the frequencies only go up to 10 hertz on the station. But again, we still can get a good look at what is going on. That is, I, I don't know what that is, a low frequency event? I'm guessing that's a low frequency earthquake unless that is a regional event with some very, very strong surface waves. I don't know. That's not what we're looking at today. Let's see. Whoa. The heck? That is very strange. That that looks very similar to the event right here. Now let me let's do 10 hertz. Let's just compare. Okay, that's very weird. So the magnitude 0, 0.0 at 33 kilometers in depth, which occurred down near Paraguay, occurred at 2:27 UTC. At least that's when it arrived on the station. And okay, so we're gonna go forward. Kind of looks similar, doesn't it? Doesn't that look kind of similar? Let's go to the waveforms of both, shall we? Look at that. Now let's go to the Netherlands earthquake. Look at that. Yeah, I don't know. That's very strange. This is looking like a very weird earthquake, but apparently seven people reported feeling this Netherlands earthquake, magnitude 3.2. From Even though this station uh, showed at arrival time at 58 seconds later, almost a minute later, we still should see higher frequencies than what we see now. I'm not saying this is a low frequency earthquake, but this is a very, very odd one. Very strange indeed. I wish we had a closer station to go on. But yeah, that's it right there. The magnitude 3.2 in the Netherlands, which was felt by seven people, supposedly. I mean, supposedly as in there's not more than that. I bet more people felt it. Dominant frequencies rest between 0.8 hertz and 2 hertz, with some weaker frequencies going well beyond that. Log power log frequency on, spectrogram. So, what do you think? We got two strange events today in the world. Very, very weird. The magnitude 0, 0.0 at 33 kilometers in depth in Paraguay, and now a 3.2 in the Netherlands, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth. What is going on, guys? Wow, that's weird. What do you think is going on? I don't know. I don't know. Anything else weird going on during this day? 
And nope, not really, except that weird low frequency event right here. Looks like, to me, that looks like a mine collapse in a way, or some type of underground collapse. I've seen mine collapses before, and they look somewhat similar to this. I could be wrong, you know, I'm not a professional, but that is my opinion on this. And then another earthquake. This is definitely, it looks like a local earthquake. That is a sharp P wave arrival, it doesn't look too, too emergent. Yeah, this thing looks like a, so Netherlands saw two earthquakes today, guys. Two earthquakes. That is very weird. Very, very odd. So what do you think is going on? Why do we have two weird events and why? Why in God's green earth would a magnitude 0.0, 0 at 33 kilometers in depth in Paraguay have a tsunami warning? See? There's the 0, 0.0. Sorry to repeat myself, but it's I think it's funny. <laughs> very, very odd. Zooming into the United States. California has seen a good interesting amount of seismicity as of late, but they usually do anyways. Up here, there was an explosion. I believe that's a quarry blast down near the Lapine Quarry near Newberry. Did not occur at Newberry. It occurred far to the southwest. And then apparently we did have an earthquake here at Yellowstone, a magnitude 1.3 at 3.2 kilometers in depth. Let me guess, between Shoshone and Lewis Lake? Oh, there were two. Let's see real quick. No, not near Shoshone and Lewis Lake. Very interesting. Down near, what lake is this? Riddle Lake. Very interesting. Just south of West Thumb Lake. So 1.4, 2.8 also. 2319 UTC, 2323. Okay, so they occurred within a few minutes of each other. Let's go here. Those are the these two earthquakes right here that we see on YLT. And here's the data from B944 for these two events. I believe there were a few other very, very teeny, teeny, tiny microquakes before and after. That doesn't look like a microquake. Uh, right here, I believe, was the 1.4, because the 1.4 happened first, I believe. And here is the 1.3. Occurred somewhat near the same depths as each other. Go to the spectrogram. Zoom out. Looks like there were three events. Two unreported events right here. Very, 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 very tiny. And then one event right there. Very interesting. And some of you are probably going to be happy that I'm doing this right now. Let's look at YPK, shall we? Here, let me zoom out. Okay, YPK. A lot of people have been asking me to cover this. And uh, I was going to later on. I put it on the back burner because I already know what this stuff is. Some people are going to be like, oh my goodness. We got harmonic tremor. No, we do not, guys. No, we do not. And even if we did, we still should keep our cool. But notice how it does correlate with surrounding stations, which had me puzzled at first until I looked at borehole 208. Of course, the data is cut out here, but the actual data is still there because I just looked at the data earlier today to see what was going on at the lake. I don't know why the data is missing on the webby quarters. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But we're not focusing on that right now. But look at this. Let's go back to YTP. Notice how it ends right near the 00 line right there. So let's go over. Let's go to borehole 208. 00 line. We do not see really any correlation at all with borehole 208. But on YLA, we do as well. We see pretty much the same thing on YLA, YTP, and even YLT. Notice there is a slight decrease right here, right where we should see it. So, to some, that will prove that it is a real seismic event, but I must urge some caution, and it even looks like it's appearing here on YPC as well, but really not at all. Listen to this. If something really was occurring over here to cause this, number one, it would show on every station, although it's showing on almost all the stations, let's go down, it's not showing on borehole 208. How is that possible if it's a real seismic event? Look at borehole 944 too. It's not showing on borehole 944. And that has nothing to do with the borehole being below the ground. That is not what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with that. Put that on the side burner for a second. If it was able to travel from YPK to YLT, notice that? If it was able to travel that distance, how did it not hit borehole 208? And how did it not hit borehole 944? How? How, how, how? And especially, look at YDD. YDD doesn't show it at all either. So, what is going on? I, I don't know, guys. I'm scratching my head. I have no idea, personally. I have no idea. I thought it was, 
like an electronic issue, but then I noticed that it's on surrounding stations, many, many, many surrounding stations, proving that, somewhat proving, that it's a real seismic event. But something that disproves that is the fact that it doesn't show on certain stations in between. For example, YUF as well doesn't show it. Even though, the remember, seismic waves, no matter what it's from, from harmonic tremor, from an underground collapse, from an actual earthquake, it doesn't matter what it is. If it's occurring underground, imagine throwing a stone in a pond and ripples go away almost equally in all directions. That is basically how seismic waves work. So if, we have, if we're armed with that information and we see this on surrounding stations, but it does not show on certain stations in between, doesn't that make you a little confused? Yeah, it makes me a little confused too. So it's up in the air. I don't know what it is. It definitely looks like an electronic issue. Uh, maybe it's piggybacking through the electronic system that they use. That's why it's only showing up on certain networks. Because the W White Network especially YLA, YLT, uh, YLT, and a lot of these other stations are in their own, how, what do you call it? Like their own electronic grid, kind of, like their own power lines, right? YJC, YMP, and YPC, I believe, are on their own separate power system, in my opinion. And the PB network with the boreholes 208, 944, borehole 206, borehole 950, they have, they're connected to a completely different power network, I believe. That is why sometimes when you see data go down on the boreholes, you see it only go down for the stations of the PB network. Whenever you see things go down in the WY network, usually it doesn't show on the boreholes, right? Because the networks are somewhat separated. So they shouldn't, so that, so for the future, if you ever see all stations go down, if you see YGC, YMP, YPC, all the stations in the WY network and all the stations in the in the borehole network, the PB network as well, go down at the same time. That would be interesting. That would be a little concerning in my opinion because they're separated networks and it would take a lot to actually cause a cascade failure along those actual networks, meaning that it would probably take a human being to do that if they every single station went down. Very interesting. But real quick, we are going to take a look at the data from YPK just to see what the heck is going on. Okay, here we have Seismic Station YPK from the same data we just looked at from isthisthingon.org. Notice up here, look at the amplitude count. Now, now just from the unaided eye, let me zoom this out because remember, this is called auto scaling. If this, if everything was completely filled throughout this entire web recorder and there was no data missing, it would look like this. The lines would look much smaller like that. Notice how that looks normal. You notice that right there? I just made them look normal, right? That looks normal. But they look like this, right? That's how they actually look. That's because of auto scaling. There's something going on with the auto scaling feature for a lot of these stations that is screwing this up. And I say that for YPK, but some of the other stations are a little more confusing as to why this is even occurring in the first place. I have no idea, but I do hope they go out and fix these stations soon. But I want you to notice something. Right here. 60 amplitude count. That's nothing, guys. And look, you can tell these are all just background microseisms. These are just normal, run-of-the-mill background microseisms that occur all the time on many stations. Oh, looks like we had a little bit of an earthquake right there. Oh, interesting. But look at that. 60 amplitude count. Nothing, guys. Nothing at all. You would think the amplitude count would be much greater if this was actually a real huge seismic event. Look at what the problem is. Notice as we go forward, boom, 30,000 amplitude count up or down? Is that up? Yeah, up. There's a big spike. Notice that huge spike. Definitely not an earthquake. That's an electronic malfunction right there. And then look at the data afterwards. Nothing. Zero amplitude count. Zero. Nothing. And notice as we go all the way down here, that's all electronic malfunctions. So really, this isn't even real data. This is not real. This is real data. This is actually recording. For some reason, the station keeps turning off and on, off and on, off and on. And it's starting to get a little annoying. Hopefully, they fix it soon. But let's go to the spectrogram just to show you. Notice how it shows normal background activity, just like at the other stations that we see. And then look, and then it just cuts off, and there's nothing. Nothing, 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 nothing. And let's go all the way down here. Nothing, 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 nothing. And then all of a sudden, boom, the station comes on for a little bit. And then nothing, 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 nothing. And then boom, 
We see a little bit of an event right here. This looks interesting. I think that's an earthquake. I don't know for sure, but let's keep going forward. Notice again, 60 amplitude count around there, normal background activity. This is not tremor. This is normal activity. The reason why it looks like spurts of tremor events is because the data is gone. Notice no data, no data, no data. So it's going to make these events look a little bit larger than they really are. That shows the importance of not using web recorders or helicorders to do your analysis. You need a seismic program like Swarm to actually look at the amplitude counts. For example, some people online say, oh, they're making the earthquakes look smaller so that people don't worry. Sometimes when bigger events come on, the smaller events get even smaller. That is called auto scale. Excuse me. That is called auto scaling. Auto scaling, guys. That's what it's called. But the thing is, is it doesn't change the actual amplitude count. The actual amplitude count is still the same no matter how. Here, let me show you. Let me show you something. Let me go up right here. Notice 60 amplitude count. I'm going to change the scale right here. Boom. Notice how they look much smaller, right? 60 amplitude count. Now let's make them as big as possible. Boom. 60 amplitude count. So that data does not change just the way it looks. So why would they be doing that on purpose? That doesn't even make any sense when pretty much everyone now uses these seismic analysis programs. Well, not everyone. I hope more people start using it. It's very, very easy to use Swarm once you get the hang of it. But again, it's called auto scale. That's why. And it should look like that, right? That is how it should look. But for some reason, something is wrong with the station. This is interesting. I don't think this earthquake's been reported. That's very weird. P and S wave arrivals are quite spread out. Very, that, I don't know what that is. Maybe that is an earthquake, huh? That's very interesting. Okay, well, moving on. That's pretty much it for right now. Let's see if any other earthquakes occurred while I've been chatting up a storm. Let's see. What a bit of an earthquake in Manhattan, Montana. 2.6 at 3.5 kilometers in depth. They've been having a little bit of swarming up there again. And a little bit of swarming near Clear Lake Volcano few earthquakes down here near the Coso, uh, Coso Junction, excuse me. I believe there is a volcano in this area right here. I'll take a look at that later. Not too many though, not too many. But overall, looking at world seismic activity, it is somewhat calm right now. Except there was a 3.1 at 8.3 kilometers in depth in Trinidad, Colorado, right on the border of New Mexico and Colorado. Let's go to the real-time tremor map. Press refresh. Whoa. Oh my god. No! Are you serious? Refresh, refresh, refresh. No freaking way. Okay, let's try this again. Real time network. Okay, okay. Let's go to Google. Type in real time tremor. Okay, real time tremor. Let's go here. No, they did not. No! Are you freaking kidding me? There's no way. There's no way. I'm going to go to PSN, PSN.org. What the heck, dude? Okay, now let's go to Tremor Research. Let's go to Tremor Map, shall we? Come on, Tremor Map. Whoa, holy crap. They changed this whole thing. What? I guess they just changed this entire tremor map. Look at this. It's brand new. I have not seen this yet. But this is not the real-time tremor map. I mean, this updates once per day. But I want the real-time tremor map. Do they not have real-time tremor? ETS reacher tremor log, tremor map, legacy. Okay, see, this is the old tremor map that they've had time. But it's still not showing real-time tremor. Tremor research. Come on, buddy. Tremor ETS research. Tremor log. Okay, they removed the real-time tremor map. They removed it. I know that there have been mistakes before on the real-time tremor map, but those are very few and far between. It, it, they, uh, they should not have taken it down. I hope they put it back up. I'll send them an email at the end of me doing this video. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. Keep an eye out for more activity. God bless. And see you later.